today I will be trying out making my own homemade bagels. So here I have my flour and my salt. And in this bowl I have my uh, warm water as well as yeast and sugar. Want to make sure when you are making a bread dough that contains both salt and yeast that you have them either separated in your bowl or mixed in at separate times. The salt will kill the yeast. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my salt into my flour. This is just a standard um, dough uh, bowl scraper. Is what they're called. So I will mix this in here. Rotating my bowl as I scrape along the sides. And I will make a small well in the middle here. And pour in my yeast mixture into the center. Making sure that I get scrape out the sugar the bottom it does tend to want to stick to the bottom. You can also mix that, uh, stir the mixture after it has set for five minutes so that the sugar dissolves. So I'm going to mix this together. Together with what I with the moisture that it has now, I will add some more water. And I live in a dry climate, so I always measure out a little bit more water than what a recipe calls for, just in case. I'm going to turn my dough out onto my surface, which I will lightly flour. different kneading techniques. Today I will use the standard well-known kneading technique. So you will pull the dough back towards you and push it forward. Kneading helps the gluten to come together. Now with this method, your dough will get quite sticky. You may need to use a little extra flour. Just try not to use too much flour, otherwise your dough could become quite dense. I've now been kneading this dough for about 10 minutes. I use a bread flour, so that takes a little bit more kneading than a, an all-purpose flour so that you get the gluten structure that you want. So what you'll want to do after you're done kneading is kind of fold it in on itself a few times into the middle so you have a nice round ball and then flip it over and round it out and then I'll put this in my bowl covered with a damp towel. Another tip for dry climates, this will help it rise. Now there is a debate on the bagel recipe sites that I have found on how long to prove this dough for for bagels. The recipe that I'm following today calls for one hour, which is standard for most bread doughs. And others have said that the only rise it should have is on the countertop for about 15 minutes. So this time I am going to go ahead and follow the recipe and let it prove for one hour on the countertop.
Uh, my dough has been resting for one hour and I am now going to shape it into the bagel shapes. I can use my bowl scraper to bring the dough out onto my work surface. about eight bagels. So I'm going to go ahead and cut dough and weigh it to about 100 grams. And I will bring it together into a ball. I'm gonna squish it just a little bit and then bring in sides into the center and pinch while you're doing that. And then go ahead and lay it on the table and circle it around with your hand. And you'll take your thumb and get some flour on it. Push it down into the middle of the dough. From there, you will place it onto your pan. And I forgot my cornmeal today, so we are going to see what they are like without. Normally, you want to go ahead and line your pan with cornmeal. I have a silk hat, so that will help bagels not to stick. And in the process of this, you'll want to, of forming your ball, you want to, if you have any dry dough, try to get it into the center and pinch it in on the underside of your dough. All my bagels have now been shaped and now they will rest for an additional 10 minutes with the damp cloth over them. My bagels have been resting for 10 minutes and now I will boil them. So you'll take one bagel at a time is what I prefer and you'll take it by the bottom and go ahead and let it boil on its top. And do this for about 30 to 45 seconds on each side a little bit longer if you want it to be chewier. And go ahead and flip it once it hits the amount of time that you want. And I am using a slotted spatula. I do not currently own a slotted spoon, but with the slots on the spatula that allows the water to drain out as well as making transfer, transfer quite easy between the boiling water and the pan. After you have boiled your bagel, you'll want to brush it with egg wash if you want to add toppings to it. This will help the toppings to adhere to the top of the bagel as well as give the bagel a nice brown color on top. Now I'm going to boil all of my bagels and after that I will put them into the oven at 425 degrees. These are the finished bagels after baking for 20 minutes in a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven. The sesame seed were made with 
bread flour and the poppy seeds were made with all purpose. So as you can see, the bread flour did rise a bit more and the all purpose flour did have a little bit different consistency to the dough when I was kneading it and shaping it. So these are bagels proved for one hour before shaping and next time we will try out just the 15 minute proof before baking. Thank you so much for watching!